Now, starting off with this video, this is going to be a Shadow Hall guide in a sense. It's a little bit mini intro guide. So, first thing I want to talk about is how to actually enter into this Shadow Hall or Shadow Palace. So, there is the Shadow Palace and then there are five different halls. You have, well, we have three halls right now. So, each hall has five stages. And pretty much what you want to do is enter Hall 1, 2, and 3 because that's all we have right now. The first day we do get three keys and every day we get one key back however there is a cap of three keys so make sure you don't over cap it's kind of like challenge mode right so other than that just gonna go over this guy just a small bit you can definitely uh skim this real easy but i'm also gonna put this in the description below i definitely will say the best awakening or non-awakening characters are definitely adele for the mobs young Hurum for the skill haste and barriers and some heals and kyle wong for the shield the shields are definitely the biggest thing about kyle and it's very important in shadow hall other than that you also have the two cost characters because there is a on stage four and five it's pretty much always having a 25 cost limit so low cost units are extremely essential for your team i mean riflemen's and shieldmen's are obvious they're very strong at damage and tanking eddie for buffing counters and soldiers me and so for damage Rangers, if you don't have Rifleman's, Cindy Looper and Isis Fire, extremely tanky strikers. One self heals, and there's two for the other one with invincibility. The Krishan already launched a really good two cost snipers, but we don't have them right now. And the base best awakening characters are obviously the tank slash damage dealer hybrid Yuna, that can pretty much solo the whole stage, or Su Yun comboed with that, the easiest and best DPS uh, dealer in the game right now with a Ranger Sniper hybrid as well. And Awakening Hilda, if you don't have any good gear on your tank, so Awakening Hilda is a natural tank, you really don't need gear on her. She's extremely good if you have her and no one else. Now, in uh, Shadow Palace 1, enemies you definitely have to look out for are Ju Shi Yun, because he can pretty much counter your skills and one shot your whole team, which is pretty funny. And the second one is pretty much Lumi, you have to CC her and get to her extremely fast as fast as you can and kill her ASAP and then the third one is Ogami but he doesn't really do anything special you just pretty much kill him right so full run is pretty much just uh what's that called floor one is pretty much just Jushiun so here's a tactic that you can use or a more free to play team Jushiun obviously being the main one because you don't want him to counter there is also this team for lumi keep them under cc all that good stuff or you can use this free to play team rhino being the tank because lumi will target your shields siege units tower units etc etc other than that room three just overpower him and the free to play team right here and at the end of the stages you pretty much fight lumi <coughs> and ogami which isn't too terrible in room five you pretty much fight the whole trio so again jushiun and kyle are probably going to be your most important ones here play team other than that we'll just review the shadow palace for two three just two and three for now so pretty much the defenders are banned snipers are banned strikers are banned max deployment cost is 25 and soldiers are banned for stage five stage three snipers are banned strikers are banned defenders are banned max deployment cost of 25 and awakening units are banned for floor three i don't think i went over floor one but you guys probably should have seen it by now pretty much Jushun stage, you can't use defend or strikers, then defenders, rangers, and mechs are banned for the last one. So other than that, let's pretty much just go through the main thing about this video. So for the most part, if you can see right here, there is a spreadsheet on how much you can actually gain a month. And with every hall clear, you get 12 or 16 or 21. And obviously there is a global clear. So basically your first time clears, you get a flat of 15, 19, or 24. And you get your total. So the biggest thing about this is obviously you're getting the same stuff. You're just going to get advanced gear materials so you can craft them, enhance the four modules to get some, you know, enhancements, appraisals. But Shadow Hall Shards are your main one. This is going to be the currency of this game and the main thing about this whole video. So obviously there is a... Uh, calculation here where you, this is how much you can get per month for most new players i expect you guys to be able to clear shadow hall one and two perfectly not perfectly but 
in a sense where if you guys can clear both of these or just clear shadow hall 2 over and over uh for the month you should be able to afford the major ones and if you can clear shadow hall 3 you can pretty much afford uh all the good stuffs pretty much so this is the calculations for that pretty much every time you do enter a hall you are using up a key which it then gives you three lives which then you can take yourself through all five stages or if you can't beat any of the stages with all three of your lives you'll stop at whatever room you cleared and get those rewards you cash in to cash out pretty much that's pretty much how shadow hall works now you can see all the other halls and stuff but yeah credits earned may vary towards the clear time and obviously you can be dropped other stuff whatever in conclusion this is the biggest thing about this is that if you can clear shadow hall 2 room 4 the rewards are way better than shadow hall 1 already if you can clear hall 3 room 4 rewards are better than 2 so on so on if you can clear 5 all the room rewards are better than hall 4 the difference in the shadow hall between 3 and 4 is only 11 and 4 and 5 is only 7. now other than that let's go through the shop so right here you can see that there are red and blue highlights obviously the gray highlights mean don't get it this spectral mode right here is pretty much just the global average non-timed mode that if you have nothing else to buy you should buy it then there's advanced gear material enhanced module t4 boxes you already know what those do so red is utmost priority i would actually recommend you to get the tuning binaries first then the molds because as you can see here the set binaries are monthly but technically the priority is set binaries tuning binaries and then this 75 percent off mode which is 15 a week and then you also have your second priorities which are the blues now there's a 50 percent off one and then there's an ultra precision t6 mold as well what does this do for 120? It basically guarantees that it's either SR or SSR. Here are, here's the math for it. Pretty much for the most part, uh, you pretty much need 2,500 shadow shards to buy all the red outlines in one month. So for those who are stuck at Shadow Hall 1 and 2, should buy those first. If you are cleared ab above Shadow Hall 3, you can consider to buy the items outlined in blue. And that's pretty much it for that. After that, I'm going to be going over the sets. And I will also explain the substats as well. Just a little bit. So, for the most part, I can tell you that the substats at T6 are pretty much the same as Maze Gears or Gordius. So keep that in mind. However, the substats for Spectral Hall gear is kind of different. For your weapon, instead of skill haste, you cannot obtain skill haste on this, which is why the skill set for, or the skill haste set for special gear is a little bit not as good. It's up to like 48% in total if you have all your equipment on skill haste, which isn't that much. I think you would rather go for something else. That is why there are six sets only in here. It is all spectral. There is actual, actually a different picture for this. However, uh, that's something that we can look forward to later in my next video. But um, yeah, for the most part, I can definitely tell you that the weapon does not have skill haste and instead it has attack speed. Everything else should be pretty much the same, I believe. However, however, option one is no longer a base stat. It is now a anti-class stat. AKA you have anti-striker, defender, ranger, or sniper as your choices. So you can build sets, mix, match, and whatnot to deal against one specific unit. For example, you can use a anti-striker Rosaria set or a anti-ranger or anti-sniper set for Pendragon. Either one works. However, as you know, Pendragon does only have a exclusive attack gear where you need to have two for attack. But then there's still two left over. So right here, you can see there's two set options. I would recommend Spectral Bullet, which gives 10% attack, 10% hit. The difference between all the Spectral Gears is that they always have attack in it. However, the four sets have 16% attack, but way less of crit damage, attack speed, or skill haste. I don't really recommend Spectral Spirit that much unless you really have nothing else to do. Someone like Veronica could, could use it because 
you don't really have that much good CDR gear because all of it's going to your tanks. So Spectral Spirit is viable for Veronica as she is the only one with the special skill as a soldier pretty much. And her special skill is pretty useful. However, there are Spectral Blaze as well, which is attack and attack speed is very useful for pretty much almost every DPS unit. As this is a high anti-ground and anti-class type DPS gear, meaning you can tune your spectral gear specifically, not tune, but you know, tune your gear to fighting against that specific danger close boss. If it's a ranger, sniper, defender, or whatever. Spectral smites like honestly, whatever you really you really kind of don't want to use it. I'm not gonna lie. Who who's gonna use the spectral smite zero out of four gear? Not not really anyone, I don't think, at least. Uh, you'd rather just see special blaze other than that though yep as you can see here special gear is not bad you get some evasion i just don't know why you would use it special bullet is pretty much the best two set and spectral chain is something that you could combo with spectral bullet as well you could do two plus two bullet or chain the 10 percent crits not bad but as you know if you miss then you might not crit so that's pretty much it for this intro to shadow hall Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. In my next video, I will be talking about how substatting works in a sense. Aside from that, I will be doing three sets of Shadow Hall videos. Uh, pretty much basically doing a free to play run with one account and then doing my own account run with almost all the best in slot stuff for Shadow Hall. So make sure you guys stay in tune if you guys know, want to know how to clear without losing your attempts. I will have videos for those soon, but otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video of my substatting guide. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys later.